Hello, here's a different type of video today. I simply wanted to talk about the game itself and how it treats the lore aspect of it. As probably all of you know, I invest a lot of time into getting to know the lore and explaining them to you in my videos. I also talk to a lot of people about the lore, and many of them ask me why do I think that the Aeon lore is so unpopular? Or how come that there are almost no videos explaining the Aeon lore? My answer to that was initially always that a lot of key parts of the lore is hidden behind side quests, dialogue with random NPCs, and also in storybooks. But as time went on, I kind of have a different view now. First of all, I think having some extra infos hidden in side quests or storybooks is actually very good. It rewards players that want to learn more and doesn't waste players' time that don't want to hear about it. I now think that there are a few big reasons as to why the lore is not as popular as it should be. And honestly, I think the lore in Aeon is very good. It is just too complicated to get the information about it. So let me explain why. The first big reason is simply that the quests are dragged out way too much and that there are too many complicated storylines at the same time. Now, to explain that better, let me simply show you an example of what I mean on the Ilios side. Let's take the story of the main character's forgotten past as the example. You start the game, you see the intro cinematic, where it shows you that some Ilios are fighting Asmodians, they beat them, the Asmodians flee, and then the Dredgen arrives, and a fight between the Ilios and Balaur begins. At level 5 you help the Elim, and the Elim Lord Daminu shows you a bit of your past, where you basically just fly around Karamatis and then the division ends. At level 9 you get the Ascension quest, where thanks to the help of Pernos and involuntarily also thanks to the help of Elim Lord Daminu, you see more of this vision. This time you land on the island, you fight against some Balaur and then get beaten by a Naga general. At this point you ascend again and Pernus sends you to Sanctum for your official ascension ceremony. Now up to this point everything is fine, you don't necessarily know what is going on in these visions of your past, but there are not so many quests in between that you lose focus and you can keep looking forward to learning more, right? After this quest you are level 10, you get sent to Vertron to continue your journey, and this is where the issues start. You get introduced to a new region, Verteron. You get introduced to flying around freely. Then you have your first encounter with Lepharists, which in itself is a big storyline that is very important later on. Then you again have a continuation of the crawl problems in Poeta, but this time they are causing trouble here in Verteron, in the Dukaki settlement. Then you move on to the storyline of the Poison Swamp, which in itself has a big and important story, but you simply do not know that until you are like level 35 or so. Until then you only know that two toxicologists made a poison to use it against the Asmodians, but they infected themselves and supposedly both died. This storyline, many hours of game time later, ties in with the Lepharist storyline, but as I said, you do not know that for many many hours. And when you finally get there then, you probably have forgot most of what happened back then. And this keeps going, you have like 10 campaign quests and multiple side quests that have nothing to do with your past. Many many hours of game time until you reach level 20 and then you can do the stigma quest. This stigma quest continues the story of your forgotten past, you learn more about who you were and what you did in the past. And then it goes straight back to other quests and dungeons, until you reach level 31 and do the Fragment of Memory 1 quest. This quest again continues the story of your forgotten past, but remember there are 11 levels between those two quests. There are so many hours of game time, so many quests and other storylines that get introduced and shown in the meantime, that you will most likely have forgotten the details of the stigma quest already. I mean in these 11 levels, you will finish the Vertron campaigns, 
move to a new region, Altnan. Then you do the Mandu requests, help the Elim against the desertification, have the story of Sotaloka, have another run-in with the Lepharists, and also another one with the Krull. You have done the Abyss entry quest with the long cinematics, you probably did Noxana, and only then you continue the story of your past. But even as you do this quest, it only shows you a cinematic of how you became the Mirage Legion's Brigade General, and that some people called you the 13th Empyrean Lord. And then it is back to other quests until level 40. So again, 9 levels until you learn a tiny bit more about your past. In these 9 levels, you again do a lot of other quests, storylines and dungeons like the Fire Temple, Chromit's Nightmare Dungeon, the Ephoro Genetics Lab, and only then you get a bit more info about your past. Now we'll stop that example here, but I think you see what I mean with there is too much time between the related storyline quests. What makes this also much worse or more complicated to remember it, is that there is not only the storyline about your forgotten past, you also have the crawl storyline that starts at level 5 and stays with you until I think level 43. You also have the Lepharist storyline that starts at level 11 and stays with you until level 50 and later on even ties in with the storyline of your forgotten past. You have the Poison Swamp storyline that starts at level 15 and ties in with the Lepharist storyline at level 35 or level 40 or so. And there are so many more examples of this. So all of this complicates it so much that most people simply can't remember all the storylines, even if they did read it. And I'm not even faulting people for that. When I played Aeon many years back, I was playing it hardcore and very focused on PvP. While I did care about the story, I didn't care enough to make sense of this labyrinth of hints you get every few levels. And I think this is how most people thought about Aeon's story. They did care, but simply not enough to play detective and figure out how the puzzle pieces fit together. So these days I think most players simply gave up and only think to themselves, okay, that's a Krull, Krull are bad, kill the Krull. That's a Lepharist, Lepharists are bad, kill the Lepharist. They don't even ask themselves why the creatures or people they kill are bad. Why they do this and that. Another reason why people didn't pay enough attention to the story is that they didn't have the opportunity to do that. It sounds silly when I say it like that, but let me explain. For one, Aeon always was PvP focused. So if you were standing somewhere in Elton and talking to an NPC, it could easily be that you get attacked by a member of the other faction. You couldn't ignore it because you would die, so in many cases the solution was to quickly click through the dialogue and move on, instead of dying to a PvP encounter because you try to read the dialogue in peace. But even if it wasn't for the enemy faction, your own faction's players could also stop you from being able to read through the story in peace. An example I can give here is the Manduri quest in Elton. There you have to rescue a woman from the Manduri village and escort her to the guards. However, only one player at the time could do this, because the person that clicks through her dialogue the fastest will trigger the quest and she will follow that player and be not interactable for other players anymore. That person has to escort her to the guards. She then vanishes and reappears after a few minutes in the Manduri village again, where a lot of players wait already to be the fastest to click through it and finish the quest themselves. This was a huge problem when Aeon Classic launched, with like 50 people waiting for that NPC at any given time. You simply did not have any kind of chance to read through this dialogue. This by the way got changed in I think the 2.0 update, where you don't have to escort her to the guards anymore, and instead only have to give a letter to the guards. So she doesn't disappear anymore and people do not have to wait there for ages fighting to be the fastest clicker in the area. 
But such quests do exist. Another example would be the Kaizen Prisoner quest, where you again have to save a woman, but from the Krull this time. However, as soon as you exhaust her dialogue, you progress the quest and the NPC disappears for two minutes, leaving other people that also need this quest waiting and gathering around this NPC, fighting to finally finish this quest. And I think this also plays its part in why people do not read these quests. Now I thought about the situation because I try to make the story accessible and understandable for all of you. But this week, for example, I couldn't really finish a video because it is connected with a quest that happens three levels after that, and that quest is connected with a quest that is happening two levels after that, and in the meantime you have two other storylines also progressing at the same pace, and neither of the questlines are at the end. All of them are in a weird middle point, and it would be awkward to stop there. It's all very strange, but I also get why they would do it that way. They want to have a story that stays with you through your entire leveling process. I just think that it is too scrambled to actually be understandable for players. If they would have dragged the story of your forgotten past with you through your entire leveling process in small pieces, but maybe made the Krull or the Lathorus storylines a bit more straightforward, and less complicated. It would grab the attention of more players, I think. But that's only my opinion. In this case, I would like to hear your opinions on the matter. Why do you think that the Aeon lore is not so well known? What do you think would help to make the Aeon lore more popular? Please leave your opinions in the comments below, and hopefully see you next time. Bye!